All right, this is Prometheus Punch the Walls Reality here with Dan Price and Bond Adami. Uh, just curious, you know, what's going on right now with Master of the Obvious? You want to tell people about it? You know, people that may not have heard of it before, just give them a little rundown about what it's about. Sure. Uh, Masters of the Obvious is a weekly sci-fi space parody from Hound Comics. Uh, it is a, you got characters such as the probable Dr. Biclops. They got two eyes. The visible woman, you can't miss her. LeBron the Snapping Turtle, uh, Dorkulon the Indentured Geek Robot, and the Amazing Todd. What's amazing about him? What's not? <laughs> they, and they fly around in a uh, battle toaster called the USS Screensaver, and then have pop culture adventures throughout the galaxy. Nice. Uh, the story arc that we're promoting right now and the print book, is they're fighting Darth Redenbacher, an evil popcorn magnet out to control the universe. Uh, our second story arc was called Boys Night Out, which is a uh, party scene from uh, the guys beat Redenbacher, and now they're just going out and getting wasted. Nice. And then our next arc, which is about to start in about a week, week or two? Yeah. Yeah, something like that, uh, is um, going to be, uh, it's going to be called uh, the Attack of the My Little Jabronis, <laughs> where you, they go to a planet where the characters are crossed between the Sopranos and the Ponies. So that should be a lot of fun. That is awesome. <laughs> So, uh, Bon, I have a question for you. What's your favorite part about drawing this wacky, crazy series? Uh, just the wackiness in general. As you know, whenever I get the strip, I always look at it and I'm like, how can I make this funnier? Hmm. What can I, th that, actually, that sounded bad. <laughs> 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 what can I do not to follow the script and just do what I want to on it? No, uh, you know, I love it. Uh, Dan sets me up for some funny things, and I'm just like, okay, this is, this is a good pairing. We're going to make something funny out of this. You know, that's, that's a good thing, because a lot of times, you know, when you, when you draw comics or when you draw things, you want to you want to do like some sort of you know serious, impactful storytelling. And you know we try to do some you know good, impactful storytelling, but we want to make you laugh your ass off at the same time. Oh yeah, well, I think we hit that mark. Okay, <laughs> most definitely. So, what's usually your inspiration when you come up with these stories? Um, you know, I I, I just like quirky. I like weird. I like I like parody. You yeah. know, I mean, so I mean, you've read some of the other stuff we've worked on, the oh, Latex yeah. Avenger stuff. And so this is an extension of that. Um, this is in more of a PG-13 realm. So, you know, dump the language and the profanity and all that stuff, and then just kind of get down to the root of the funny. But I like to play with things like when you've got things like, uh, you know, Star Trek or Star Wars or Doctor Who or that sort of thing and mix it in with like Caddyshack or yeah. Universal Monsters, you know, play with those kind of archetypes. I mean, that's another big thing is I love archetypes, you know, and uh, to, to really screw with that as, mo as much as possible. By making the Incredible Hulk a giant turtle that <laughs> sits around in a fishbowl, that's fun to me, you know. Yeah. When you can take, uh, you know, Orville Redenbacher and cross him over with Darth Vader, that's hilarious to me, you know. And then, and just the deadpan crap, like, you know, the visible woman. <laughs> I mean, for crying out loud, are you serious? I don't even believe me when I write this stuff, so you do what you can. You know? I, feel like, I feel like that's what makes it so good, you know. It's sure. like you turn the page and you're just like, your jaw just drops. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you're Thank welcome. You. So I'm wondering, what's the creative process? when you're coming up with the designs for the characters or even, um, you know, if you have input on the stories as well? Uh, I do, you know, we, we're co you know, co collaborators in this, uh, this venture together. So a lot of the times we both kind of come up with a concept. Dan does the, you know, the story writing and then I'll help design the characters along with it. Um, originally the masters, uh, Dan had done a sketch of them and then I kind of took that and went running with it. And then after that, you know, I'll come up with an idea for a character, you know, he'll We'll come back and, you know, it's just a, it's a back and forth process, you know, it's a collaboration medium with it. Um, as far as, you know, coming up with the characters, uh, like you can kind of see, they're kind of influenced on like, you know, the 1940s and 50s kind of mm -hmm. pulp feel, you know, as far as, you know, like, you know, the, the action stories and yeah. science fiction stories like that. And then, you know, certain characters, you know, I draw from other science fiction stuff, you know, I'll draw from Star Wars, you know, all kind of. I don't think I have anything that's like referenced Doctor Who or anything Got yet. There's, there was a, was there a we've screw? Done, we've done a one, I think. I know we're about to have a biggie come yeah. out here soon. Uh, we're working on a print book for Hound uh, that's going to be uh, Masters of the Obvious, The Day of the Earth, yada yada. Okay, okay where the uh, the characters are, uh, Don Bond wanted to do a time travel story. He said, <laughs> the next big story we do, I want to do a time travel piece. And he goes, and that's all I, you know, that's all he had said. And he goes, so run with it. And I'm like, yeah, cool. So we're going to be playing off of The Day the Earth Stood Still. We're going to be playing off of Star Trek Four and definitely Doctor Who. But uh, we'll let this slip. Can I let the name slip? We decided on it already. Yeah. So uh, our uh, 
our Doctor Who character is going to be known as Dr. What's His Nuts, and uh, you can imagine what we're going to do from there. So this should be a lot of fun. <laughs> there you have it. You have the exclusive sneak peek at uh, what's coming up next for Masters of the Obvious. I'm curious, um, what, how has things been um, with Hound? How's the reception been with the, with the strip? I'm loving it. I mean, so Hound has been very good to us. The the amount of reach we're able to get with the with Hound has been phenomenal. Uh, the print quality of the books that we're putting out are amazing, and just the opportunities to get out to great shows has been it's been phenomenal. So yeah, their social media is great, and they've got a really loyal fan base, and we're bringing new people in for them too. So it's been very mutually beneficial. I like to think. All right, sounds fantastic. So of course, the question that's been burning on my mind: Latex Avenger. Okay, so some crazy things are happening with Latex Avenger right now. I'm not going to get into too much of it yet, but uh, we uh, there's some things in motion for it right now, a possible publisher and also a new creative direction on it. Okay, so um, I think you're going to really like what we're doing with it. The character's going to maintain the same way he has, but we're pushing it into a more of a mainstream role. Uh, so Latex Avenger, yeah. I, I, when we get when we get further along with that, uh, how about we come back on your show oh, and we yeah, talk about sure. that for yeah, sure? I love that. All right, awesome. Bond, you in? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> awesome. So I got one more question. Um, so you're lighter. The uh, Power Rangers stole it. Can you elaborate on that? Okay. All right. So yeah, last night we were hanging out and there was a couple of Power Rangers around us. One of them bummed a cigarette. <laughs> I'm not going to get into which Power Ranger it was because it doesn't really matter, okay? Because he's here and he's a cool guy. They're all scuffed. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> you bastards. Anyway, so I gave, Bonnie gave him a cigarette. I gave him my lighter. We shot the breeze for a minute. And then all of a sudden, I, he walked away and I'm looking around going, where the, it's my lighter. And I'm like, dude, a Power Ranger stole my lighter. And then all these comments come in. Some of them nice, not some of them not so nice. And then uh, about, and I'm like, oh my God. And then like Bond turns around and goes, oh, hey man. By the way, I got this. <laughs> Son of a bitch. So anyway, I'm sorry there, Power Ranger. You're a very nice man. I'm sorry that I accused you of something you did not do. But given the understanding that I had a couple of tequila shots in me already, <laughs> bear with me. All right? That is awesome. Okay, <laughs> all right, well, if you have anything um, you want to say to our, our viewers, you know, about uh, your comic. <laughs> 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 well, there you have it. Speechless, which is how you'll feel. After reading their amazing comic, check it out on, was it hound.com? Yeah, uh, houndcomics.com and uh, mastersoftheobviouscomic.com. All righty. Right. Well, thank you. Thank you very Appreciate much for the time. Yeah. Yeah, and I've seen you again. All right.